Welcome back to the podcast. Beloved, this is indeed your brother, Big VJ, checking in. Today's conversation, we're going to read an article. It's an article from BSNBC. And the headline reads, Judge faults Brianna Taylor's boyfriend for her death drops key charges against two cops right so love we're going to have a conversation about that and before we do we just want to say you know we want to send our condolences to the taylor family uh you know we're sorry for their loss we're going to have a conversation about one of their loved ones and uh sometimes beloved you just never know who's listening right we want to shout out our brother Joe for sending us this article. Joe hit the DM and um, we took a look at it on Instagram. We confirmed it. Sad to say, we were not shocked because we kind of like typically see. Well, you know, this is how the devil operates. He kind of got this thing that he does with our people. It's like he, I don't know. You see somebody shot down by the police, somebody killed by the police. Um, The police go to jail if they do. 18 months, 24 months, 36 months, and then before you know it, they're back at home. Just kind of like long enough for you to forget so this is how they they do things right this is uh this is how the devil rule now the reason why we can always put these kind of conversations directly in the devil's lap is because our people never do this our people never kick in the wrong apartment doors wrong apartment homes or the right apartment doors or the right homes and kill this person and kill that person and it's some kind of mistake the warrant is tricky it's funny no it just don't happen it doesn't have it does doesn't it doesn't happen when you get three or four police officers the original men and they kick in the door of some devil family somewhere and they just get to shooting crazy and they get to killing folk it just don't ever happen I mean, you you would get three or four original officers jumping on another original man and killing him and whooping him, and they they're trained to do that. But when they get in front of master, they don't do that. The chip it it switches on and they go right into servant mode. It just doesn't happen. So it's hard to say, well, your V, you can't make everything race you. Well, I kind of can when I never see two or three original officers do this. They never mistakenly shoot a devil in a car, the traffic violation. Don't they don't mistakenly put their knee on a white man's neck. They just don't do it. And he just saying, well, I can't breathe. And they just, it just doesn't happen. Nobody got the video footage. A Brico, Officer Brico, right? Officer Brico Jones is holding him down. It just don't happen. It just don't, it just don't happen. And he, and the white boy down on the ground just saying, hey man, I can't breathe, man. I can't breathe. He's like, man, I don't care about that. And he just we don't we don't see it it never happens but when it comes well, you know when the shoe is on the other foot not even the other foot when the shoe is on the same foot all the time that foot is always on it's always on our neck right so uh, we want to appreciate our brother joe for sending us the article and we also want to say you know shout out to our brother nate who um you know who gave us some heads up about what to do and what not to do when we visit the great state of Tennessee, right? Because beloved, I love the South. Um, the South is just a place where I feel as though you know the food is always nice, the people is always predictable, and I always have a great time no matter where I go in the South, right? Coming up for my last vacation of the year, we're going to go to a spot in Gatlinburg 
and our brother Nate was just giving us a heads up about the wildlife, um, animal life. Watch out for the bears. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I appreciate that, beloved. We're going to be at the Westgate, though. You know what I'm saying? Right now, that's look like where we're going to be at in September. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's our plans, beloved. I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of nature stuff going on. It's a lot of trails and everything going on. But right now, it's just looking like Westgate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We ain't going to hit too many of those trails. Um, now, in Nashville, though, there's a spot that we supposed to went to. We supposed to went to a spot called Gaylord. Gaylord Resorts in Nashville. But uh, you can't get in it. I actually, I supposed to went last year, right? If, if truth be told. But I don't know. Something about the fall season must be the busy season because you can't even like they're booked up for the whole all of September. You can't get it. You can't get. They don't have anything over there. I'm like, what are they doing over there? Like you can't. You know, you can't even get in over there. So we're gonna figure something out when we eventually get to Nashville, right? We got it in the plans. But uh, right now we're looking like it's gonna be Westgate. In Gatlinburg, but salute to our brother Nate that you know for reaching out to us, giving us a heads up. And um, I might as well say this too. Shout out to our sister Rashida Jones, right? Because we view this platform as BSNBC. Yeah, you know, we gotta give credit where credit is due. We know our sister, right? She's an Asiatic. Uh, sister Rashida Jones, she's sitting in the big chair over there. Right, our sister's in the big seat. You know, she's the president over there at MSNBC. So we're going to see what the stories look like in the future, right? She's a liberal, though. She's a Democrat. And the problem that we have with these liberals over these platforms is this, right? They kind of do something very funny. I don't know if you noticed, but we'll help you notice it if you didn't notice it before. We're going to read an article about Breonna Taylor. Right, peace be upon her. She's no longer, longer here. She was killed by devils that entered into her apartment, right? It's going to be always put in article form. Because this is how liberals kind of run it, right? Now, let's just say if Trump get back in office, well, it won't be in article form no more. It won't be on the bottom ticker anymore. It's going to be primetime news all the time. Because the way that liberals run it, they, it's like a scare tactic that they use. They don't talk policy, so they talk fear. Everything is fear-based. Like, the nerve of these people to say, like, you know, what Trump would do. Like, Trump is the boogeyman, but he, how could he be the boogeyman to original people when he was already president? So all these scary tales and all this thriller in it and this... Uh, doom and gloom that's going to happen if this man get in the big seat it didn't happen when he was in the big seat everything that everybody is afraid of it none of that happened that was the beauty of what that uh, that dude doing four years because everything that they try to scare you it never happened really really when obama was in there more folks were getting shot down and everything and you know what I'm saying? our people was being slaughtered on mass it, and you know it's bad when the liberals got to cover it because they don't like to cover that. They like to wait till Republicans get in office. They cover it all the time then. They just show all the shootings. Somebody, some, they try to make it like, look, these folks is acting like this because this man is in office. But then when Obama was in office, right? When he got off that elephant and he sat in a chair at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, there were most shootings, but they don't, they, they twist it when it came to, see, they just, they're tricky people. Let's take off the let's take the platforms out of it. The so-called white man is a trickster, period. So the unfortunate reality for us is that we have to vote for the trickster that's going to do less damage to the people. Because they're all devils, beloved. We can see it, you know. Even if they got an Asiatic up in front or original woman up in front, you know, we still know who running the back. We that's not no. <laughs> That's an old school trick. We know you in the front. We know who in the back. So you just up in the front. You know what I mean? So shout out to our brother B. Harris. Now he comes to mind. He said he's an independent. And 
we feel as though that when it comes to local elections, you know, when you vote for your mayors and, and whatnot, all mayors, I don't even see how mayors are endorsed by a Democrat or Republican these days because you don't, everybody can be independent now. That's the power of the internet. I spoke about this before, right? I don't know how we got on this subject. We're just having the conversation. See, Dr. Umar is a very powerful man. He's from Philadelphia. Very powerful, right? If he became mayor, he'd be sitting in that big seat in Philadelphia over that budget. See, they would never, they never want us to know that we got that kind of power. If Umar became or ran for the mayor of Philadelphia, he'd win it. He'd win it easy. And then he he don't have to listen to DC. DC won't control him like they control Eric in New York City. He can just work for the people because when the money comes, when he's he listen, that kind of man over that budget, shit, he'll be that's power. The internet is so powerful, you can create a name. You don't need to have somebody from DC endorsing you or funding you or putting you on their political platform so you can become a local mayor or something. You know. If you work hard on the internet and you get your name, you can be independent. You can run the whole city. You'll be over the budget. That's power. They don't want us to know that we can do that. What they want us to do is leverage our votes to put them in power. That's cool on a federal level because we know that's that's bigger money. You got to deal with bigger money and bigger donors on that level. It's going to be more difficult for an independent to rule up there. Even though I'm saying that, I like that the Kennedy do. He ain't the best speaker. But if you start looking at some of the stuff, when it's transcript, you can read it. You're like, damn, he's saying some shit now. He got some policies that's going to work. But just his speaking is a little. But even that, though, check it out. Even that. That dude being a lifetime, lifelong Democrat, if he, his whole family was with them liberals. If he's talking about someone, I'm going to endorse Trump. That should tell the average voter something because he knows Kamala going to give you nothing. She has nothing to give. She can't even... She's playing a psychological game like, you know, um, she's playing a game like she's running for the seat like Trump is running for the seat. Well, kind of, but not really. You're already in the White House. You you already... You can walk down to Joe's office and whatever you try to get past, you can say, Joe, I think this would be something good to put on the, on the table for the American people. If you put this out as president... I, as your vice president, this could be Kamala talking. I, as your vice president, I can run down to Capitol Hill and get the votes you need. She doesn't. She's not doing that. She's playing like her and Trump is running for the same thing and she can't do nothing. With, but you already in the White House. It's a hustle game she's running. Beloved, check it out. I'm going to say this real quick. because We're going to have a conversation about our sister, right, Sister Taylor. Well, I'm going to just say this real quick about politics, right? You know, we're taught that Islam is mathematics. See, this is a, what Mr. Muhammad taught, right? Mr. Muhammad taught that Islam is mathematics. When you hear that term Islam, don't think about the Islam, the saying niggas. We ain't got nothing to do with that. I, self, Lord, and master. Islam. Right? Islam is mathematics. Mathematics is Islam. This is how you can prove it in no limited time. If Kamala Harris, and she did, if the sister came out, and we love our sister because she's Asiatic, so I'm not going to play this whole she ain't black game. That's an original woman. She's clearly Asiatic. You're Asiatic. We are all Asiatics. We get it. I can't get, I can't really play that game. Now, I'll be funny and say, where's well, different kinds of black? Now, she's black because black just mean original. But she's not like pit bull black or collard green black <laughs> black eyed peas black you know what I'm saying like she ain't that kind of black <laughs> that's our sister though <laughs> you know what I'm saying she like a, you know she's like the dot on the forehead black you know what I mean she's like uh, <laughs> Kama Sutra black you know what I'm saying <laughs> she's different but she's our sister I mean, she's we come in all kind of shades she's an original woman she's an Asiatic Right, we just we got to be clear on that. I, that's a game I can't get involved in. She had an interview though, and she came out right. 
<laughs> I have to say this, like, Big Mama, listen, she said she that her mama told her to put, because we talking about two different kinds of black. Her mama say put the greens in the uh in the bath in the bathtub. I don't know how many of you guys know that, right? Come on, <laughs> say it. Before she's a cook collard greens and said her mama, you know, her mama told her to put the greens in the bathtub. Now check it out. This is what I mean when I say a different kind of black. You know what I mean? You know, uh <laughs> now you could you know my big mama, you don't do that. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> Hey man, my big mama would make you go get your own switch. See, this is a different kind of black. You know, you had to you do some silly shit like that. Mama gonna make you no, know, you go out and pick the switch. Cause you so silly. I gotta put this ass whooping on you now, and I'm gonna let you pick the uh <laughs> the tool of engagement. Go out there and go get me a switch and bring it back up in here. <laughs> Cause you don't put no collard greens and mama in the tub. No, sugar, you don't do that. You put we put them in the sink and clean them. But that's a that's a different kind of black. Like I like I say, like this is pit bull black. You know, this is uh <laughs> you know, this is the uh the dog live in the backyard black. You know what I'm saying? This is the dog don't eat off our plate black. We don't we don't let the dog come in the house and eat off our plate. You know what I'm saying? We got we get doggy bowl. We don't drink after the dog. That's that's a different kind of black. <laughs> we don't do that. You know what I'm saying? We don't do that, you know. The dog eat the scraps, you know what I mean? That's the, you know, di different story, with different day. Our sister come out, right? And she says, "Well, I'm not gonna do nothing only for black people." Yet at the very beginning of the interview, she acknowledged a disparity. You follow me? Okay. Once you acknowledge. A disparity you can't start well because we're doing mathematics now islam is mathematics now you acknowledge a disparity you can't turn around and say now well i'm not gonna only do something to help black folks because now you're taking mathematics off the table when you acknowledge a disparity you only can do something for black folks now because it's a disparity you can't right like i can't have my um <laughs> I can't have two of my nephews, right? We sit in the living room and one got $500 in their pocket and the other one got $50 in his pocket, right? And I acknowledge that nephew B got $50 in his pocket. He, it's a disparity when it comes to income. So I'm going to fix the disparity, right? So I'm going to pass a policy that's going to hit one. Going, a policy I'm going to pass is going to help one that's going to help them both. Okay, so I give... My youngest nephew, nephew B, I give him, I say, well, you know what? For now on, I'm going to give y'all $50 every weekend. After the first weekend, when I give my little nephew $50, and then, then I give my oldest nephew $50, what did I do? Now, one of them got $100, now the other one got $350. Did I change the disparity? Or $550, because I think I started off with $500. One got $100 bucks and one got $550. Did I change the disparity? I didn't change it. Because it's still an income gap. Math mathematics that doesn't make sense I can't tell you where it's a disparity and I'm gonna pass something that's gonna work for everybody that's gonna fix the disparity you, it's not if with I know if I identify that my youngest nephew he's hurting he only got 50 bucks his big bro got 500 to fix the income disparity if I just gave him the $50 and then give the other one out, I'm closing the gap at least of that disparity I only can give him something now I can't come back and tell you where a policy that help black folk will help everybody. But damn, shorty, what, what happened to the disparity conversation? You, you're playing word games. But this is why we're taught, you no, know, you put mathematics on everything. Mathematics, it'll pull the lie out because you it, that's not mathematically. That doesn't mathematically make sense. Beloved, maybe all that. This is a different story for a different day. We just talking and we just having a conversation. A Kentucky judge ruled that Breonna Taylor's boyfriend's decision to open fire is a legal cause of a fatal shooting by police officers, throwing out federal charges against two officers who allegedly falsified a drug warrant that led to police breaking down a door and killing her in 2020. So, it's the boyfriend's fault. Shout out to our brother Joe for sending us this. It's a boyfriend's fault, it's not hers. 
it's the boyfriend's fault. Hmm? It's the boyfriend's fault. In a decision on Thursday, U.S. District Judge Charles R. Simpson III dismissed felony deprivation of charges against her former Louisville police detective, Joshua Janies. Who was it? Hold on. Joshua Janies. Josh, that's a Jew name, ain't it? That's Jaime Joshua Janies. What kind of name is Janies? I almost blew by that. Let's stop up this bag up. Let's hold on. Let's hold on. Hold on. Hold on now. Louisville police officer Joshua J. Nice. I had to look that name up. We might have come back to this one. I should have had another screen open. J. Nice, that sounds like a Jew name. Hmm. I got to see a photo of his nose now. I got to see if he got that hook. If that hook on that nose, that showed him. I didn't even know Louisville. Now I got to figure out what the population of Jaime's down there. Detective Joshua Janies, who was accused of knowingly drafting a false search warrant affidavit on Taylor's home. That's technology. On former Sergeant, Sergeant Kyle Meany, who approved the warrant. Uh, let's stop. Let me say this. Right. If you ever notice. There's a nature, there's a pattern that follow these people. And we identify that pattern as technology. It follows them everywhere in politics and business in law technology when you start seeing or whenever you see non-original people rule original people they do it with a trick and we call that technology which means that they have the perfect science on how to use tricks, lies, and deceit. And it's in their nature. They just do this without. So you, you look at them as a block of people and you follow them and you notice that three things go wherever they go. Captivity, disproportion, and corruption. There's no justice in these people. It's never going to be there. Right? The format and the blueprint that they go on, and we said this earlier. See, they depend on original people having short memories. They don't want no, like, I mean, they don't want a, a race riot. They haven't had a race riot in Louisville, Kentucky since 1968, right? It, it had something to do with, uh, it was a police officer. They're doing the, the patrol. They're on the beat. And then there was a teacher. And it was an, the teacher, of course, is the original man. And he fit the description. He's riding around in the car. He just fit the description. I mean, we know what the description is. <laughs> we know he's driving by black, right? Anytime you drive as an original man, you're going to fit the description. So they start harassing the brother and picking on the brother. Then you get a crowd. Then you get a right, right? Well, Louisville don't want that. So they got like a new little blueprint that they use. Where depending on what city that they want to save, what they do is they quickly arrest the officer. Or they charge the officer with something. But he's not going to do no real time. They're going to say he's never going to be an officer again. And then he goes to another precinct. And he gets a job. Like, yo, check this out. Let me tell you what's bugged out. We had a conversation on a sister that was killed in Springfield. And they hurry up and threw cold water on it. Because, you know, the folks are going to tear up the city. So they do these things to save the city. And they charge this cat with some crazy charge. We're talking about the devil that, that shot the sister with the boiling water. Right. We know that, you know, they're not going to he's not going to really do no real time. They can they can find dude guilty tomorrow. Well, all they're going to do is wait for like a couple of years. Or something, let the dude back out free. But dig, this man had all kind of DUIs on his record before he became a police officer. How does that happen? Easy. He's a devil. They're trickster kind of like people. They operate in corruption. So the original man and the devil got two different kind of measuring sticks. Your measuring sticks, you have to be perfect all wise right and exact you got to be there all the time not him his nature just follow him just corruption disproportion captivity you know what captivity means when he gets around you he gonna play boss he gonna it's just in his nature to do this it's just in his nature he's not really like a truthful person 
if you really start talking about facts and just stay on something like real truthful, he don't really know how to do that. He's kind of like, he's going to get off the truth. He's going to get off the road of truth. He's going to go somewhere else because it's just his nature to do that. He loves disproportion. I mean, he's not going to pay everybody equally. They got a, a, a hustle up north. They call it the union. This is the hustle they run when you get in the Midwest up north. When you go south, they run a different kind of hustle. They run like a um, like a uh, human resources kind of run everything when you get down south. You understand? And I love the south, but this is just how they kind of run. So they got the Negroes trained down there, right? All black, brown, red, and yellow. Where they give you a job in the deep south, you can't discuss your pay. Do you know why they say that? Because they finna pay you one thing and pay Mr. Charlie something else. But they don't want you talking about the money because you will see it's different. So what happens is this, you get down south, you working a job, and here you is, you got a decent home and a decent car, right? Then you go over to your co-worker house, he got a Christmas party, right? Because the devil love these parties, he gonna have like a Halloween party, a Thanksgiving party, Christmas party, he got something going on, New Year's party, whatever. He gonna invite you over. Now as an original man, initially you gonna say, nah, I ain't gonna go, I ain't gonna go. But he'll play a wife game with you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my wife, you know, Cindy, you know, she wants Shamika to come over and this, that, and there. So you go over there and you get over to dog crib. Dog got boats all in the back of the house. You're like, well, damn, wait a minute. We work at the same job. <laughs> we ain't got another job. We work at the same job. You know what I'm saying? He got two cars out there, a Chevy a, or F-150 because they're going to keep a truck out there. And then in the backyard, he got one, he got a smaller boat with a bigger boat and he got another a, a vacation home and you trying to figure out, what well, damn, hey, because that's how that, that's the human, see, they do that down south. That's the human resource. He, he's full of corruption. He don't even allow you to talk about your pay when you get down there. Then there's no unions. Very rarely, you might have like Boilermaker Union and you might have, uh, if you work out on a ship, because working out on the ship is big down there. They got the Gulf Coast coming all the way around to the Atlantic Ocean. So you got a lot of shipbuilders and that, and they have a union. But boy, when they bringing them immigrants in, they finna bust them unions up. The pay finna get funny all over again, right? I, I don't know. We don't want to get too political. <laughs> Maybe that's a different story for a different day. I still don't like to say this. See, it follows these people. They running a hustle. This is called technology. This is their nature. This is their nature. Listen. Three plain clothes Louisville officers. We're at the paragraph three. Three plain clothes Louisville police officers. Do you know a plain clothes? They had street clothes on. They didn't have no uniform with the hat. They just had they had some devils with regular clothes on. Brett, John, Miles. Execute a search warrant, right? Pounding on the door. Wake up, Taylor boyfriend, Ken. Ken grabbed the scrap. He fired a shot. It's dark now. You understand? It's dark. He hit one of the devils that was coming in. And then in return fire, they did 32 shots. How is that even possible? 30, they were looking for the free kill. See, they just needed that one to go off. And then 32. Now, do your brother V the biggest favor, right? In your mind, I want you to hear one shot go off. And then I want you to hear in your mind 32 shots go off. Boom, 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 boom. That's just 15. Now think about that 15 more times. Plus two. What? Now. They come in the door, it's a single file line. You dig? Which means that while the first cat is offering fire, the other cat can't shoot. He's directly behind the other officer. He got to kind of move over to the side. They all got to get positioning to shoot in somewhere to hit something. But listen, they're taught to shoot center mass. You think they can, but they do it in the room. You think they can see everything? They can't see everything. It's dark. So they just taking the, they didn't care. That's reckless, beloved, is the point I'm trying to make. But that follows them. That follows them. If they can shoot a sister in the head with hot water, what you gonna think to somebody that that let one shot off? Oh man, they finna just 32 shots. And then the judge come back around and said, well, there's no direct link between the warrantless entry 
and Taylor's death. What, what are you talking about? Are we surprised? Of course not. This is his nature. See, they make these guns. Gun violence is always going to be a problem in America because, see, they let the Negroes get the guns now. But they didn't let you get those guns 150 years ago. So what's the difference? You've been seasoned now. See, there was a time with this government where you as an original man, you couldn't even own no gun. You would ne They'd never give you one because you know why? At that time, you knew who your enemy was, so you couldn't get a gun. But they give you guns freely now because you're confused all of a sudden about who your enemy is. You're confused. Beloved, I, I go one step further. There was a time where it was illegal to have four black men congregate with each other. Just four. No, no, no. Somebody going to jail for this. Y'all can't all four. All four of y'all talking in the field, talking on the block, talking on the corner. That's illegal. No, no, no. You can't do that. Now, you can fill up a whole church house full of men now. You can fill up a whole mosque full of men now. Negroes ain't talking about nothing. I don't care what you... You've been seasoned already. You've been buck broken already. You ain't finna say nothing. You ain't gonna say nothing to offend him. That's for sure. And you're not gonna say nothing to turn on his government, whether it's local, state, or federal. That's for sure. So what do they care now for? You got the guns now. You're good at killing each other. Gun violence is a big deal. We're talking Louisville, right? So I have to say this. Well, peace be upon our sister Brianna because she's no longer here. She's She died at the result of gun violence along with 150 other people who was just killed last year in Louisville due to gun violence. 150 people were killed just like, not this year, last year in Louisville due to gun violence. So what can we say about that? Well, the only thing we can say, well, well, at least we glad that some people was a bad shot. Their aim wasn't that good. They can't, they got some old crappy guns. They don't know how to use because if we told the whole truth, we had to say, well, over 400 people last year in Louisville were shot. Over 400 were shot. Whew. Well, thank God just 150 died. Because uh, over 400 was shot. So if we do the mathematics, like we're always taught to do, we say, well, beloved, it's only 365 days in a year. Only 365 days in a year. Nobody is coming to save you. It's only 365 days in a year. That's worse than Afghanistan. That's worse than anything in the East. Jordan. Palestine, Israel, Iraq. That's worse than that. It's better. You got a better chance of going into the East and because 405 people were shot in Louisville alone. That's one. That's that. That's an average, like one person a day. So we name these cities after the East, but it can't be because the East not that. that we we name these cities Chirac. We say Chirac. We say Vietnam. There was a time, beloved, we called Detroit Vietnam. We dropped the V, put the D on it. But you know what? People in Vietnam had a better chance to live than they do in Detroit. West side, east side, oh man, for sure. People in Iraq got a better chance of living in Chicago. South side, west side, oh, for sure. But see, you don't know who your enemy is no more. And then you have teachers both through the system and religiously they're over you they teach you got an invisible enemy all of a sudden some it's an invisible enemy floating in the sky nobody know what none of these nothing it's just something in the sky floating around and i don't just <laughs> we'll leave it there <laughs> when we'll leave it there yeah man you know this is technology at its finest but vote Vote. Go local, man. This federal thing is so cool. We get so passionate. We get so riled up. I like it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a part of the process. You can now you got to come back local. There's a problem, beloved, when you have 408 shootings in Louisville. Last year. We ain't counting the ones this year. It's a problem when you have HIV. 
I'm talking about that shit is going through the fucking roof in H-Town. Through the roof in Memphis. Through the roof in Miami. Through the roof in Atlanta. Right? And then, listen, you can get somebody on the federal level, right? Come there as a candidate and have a sister from Houston where there's a big problem with STIs. There's a big problem with STDs. There's a big problem with HIV. Get on the stage in Atlanta and start gyrating and jumping around and twerking. And people always say, well, you know, the federal government can't do nothing for you, this and that, the CDC. I'm like, damn, you don't, you won't even come in this joint and acknowledge the issue that's going on in the city of Atlanta? Like, you got to be nuts and out your mind. There's a brother from the Lost Foundation of uh, Islam named Eric. Man, you know, I, I, I reached out to Eric. I was... This, this man was going against Khalil. Khalil is in Detroit on, in, on Six Mile. He's at the Muhammad Center. You, just imagine two lost founds, right? This is some silly shit. This is, but this is religious set tripping. Two lost founds from the nation of Islam going back and forth, right? Now, there's not no, if I put it in context, they're not under the Brother Venice of Chicago. These just some niggas is off on their own doing some silly shit. You know what I mean? And I respect Khalil. You know what I'm saying? He's from the city. I respect him. But just they renegades. They kind of like got their own thing. Uh, they independent, blase, blase. One brother is going after another brother, Eric, going after Khalil. Khalil is in Detroit. And Eric resides in the city of Atlanta. And on the books, I believe the number is like over 44,000 people in the city of Atlanta got HIV. So I'm like, well, brother, if you're supposed to be there to clean up the people, right? Providing it with sound and right reasoning. Raise up the elevation of our people that are mentally dead. Why in the fuck would you pick on the dude way in Detroit who used to be your student? If I just, we're going to keep it all the way funky about some uh, girly mouth kind of like shit. It doesn't make sense. But this is, I'm just showing you this. This is a, this is the mind of folks in religion these days. They're not, they fixing the, the issues on the ground. They're not even looking towards that no more. They care nothing about what's going on inside of these communities. They don't care. Their mind is somewhere else. They're not trying to tap into the problems to assist in providing information that can provide healing to them. They're not in. They're not even on that. That's where we are right now as a village. We ain't on that right now. But beloved, it's time. It's time that we turn our hearts and minds back on it. Because now, if a political candidate is not going to address your needs, she come to Atlanta and let somebody twerk in front of you where the SEIs is through a roof. And the religious people, the so-called ministers ain't going to do it. Beloved, you got no friends. And all we can do is put the family back together because nobody is coming to save you, beloved. You got to save yourself. And we'll leave it there for real, for real this time. Peace and black power to your family. Yes. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys for hanging out. Beloved, this is indeed Real Black Content of the Phone Podcast. Hey, man, it's your brother V, man. I'm going to get it with you guys later. Peace, peace, beloved, and more. And more peace. Thanks for listening. Remember to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Google, Anchor, Spotify, and Facebook. Also, don't forget to like, share, and comment on the podcast. Your opinion of what you just heard is important to the platform. So yes, beloved, your comments are the engine and fuel to the machine. Stay blessed and have a powerful day.